Now what about our universe? What does that mean for our universe? Well, we say we have an infinite universe. Well, in mathematics, we find out that you can take zero dimensions, the point, and have infinite points within a line. You can divide this line into as many points as you want. Now let's take the square. Oh, actually, you know what? We're going to use something called the Koch curve, actually. There is a mathematical figure started by a mathematician called Koch, where you take a triangle like this, and on each side, you add another little triangle, like a thorn. And the first thing we'll get is a star of David, probably here. And then you do that again. Doing it the quick way. Right. But you keep doing it. You do it again, you do it again, you do it again. So every line is going to get a little triangle onto it again and again and again and again. So I think we can agree that it has infinite lines because it just keeps on going. It just keeps on adding lines and adding lines and adding lines. But mathematicians have proven that the area inside of this is finite. There is an area to this. And you know what? We can see that too because we can draw a square around it. And we know a square has finite area and it encloses this thing. But we know that we keep making smaller and smaller lines. It's going to have infinite lines but it's going to have a finite area. Well, the same thing holds true one dimension higher. There's a function. For those of you who are taking math, you may have heard of it as a hyperbola. 1 over x. So if we make a coordinate system and we graph this, 1 over x, I'm not going to deal with the negative section right now. I'm just looking at the positives. 1 over x, we know that it has infinite length. Because for those of you in math, this line expands infinitely in this direction and infinitely in that direction. But as you move on to calculus, you'll find that you can rotate these things. You can rotate lines around what this is called the x-axis. So if we took this, this swoopy line and spun it around like this, we would get something like a trumpet. And we're going to cut off this part. We're just going to take from this point on. But remember, this line keeps expanding. So the trumpet keeps going and going and going and going and getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But it never ends. This is called Gabriel's horn. And what mathematicians have been able to prove is that this has a finite volume, which means although this length is infinite and therefore the surface area around it is infinite, it has a finite, a finite volume. So that means you could take a finite amount of paint, pour it in this trumpet, let it seep through the edges, and paint an infinite amount of space with a finite amount of paint. But of course, we haven't been able to create such a thing, so we can't actually physically see this. But looking into the fourth dimension now, that means you could take an infinite third dimensional quantity, or volume, infinite volume, and wrap it around a finite four dimensional quantity. So what does that mean? Well, what about our universe? People say that our universe is infinite. So you could take our infinite universe and wrap it around a finite four-dimensional shape, and God or whoever is up there in the fourth dimension could be holding it right here and looking at it from all angles. But then that brings up the question, what about the fifth dimension? What about the sixth dimension, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth? Can they exist? Well, then they can exist too. So then is there a God beyond God? Is there something beyond heaven? Well, what if God and heaven are infinitely dimensional? What if they're the highest possible thing, just infinite? They shine down on everything, and they're beyond everything. And actually, that's been talked about before by a mathematician named Hilbert, although not in the religious context, necessarily. And he created what's known as Hilbert space. And this is infinite D, or infinite dimensions. And although it isn't used geometrically speaking, very commonly in math, it is used in higher level mathematics. and and is very important to the fundamentals of advanced mathematics. So once you expand your view into other dimensions and think about the possibilities of multiple dimensions beyond our own, you realize that there's a lot more out there and that your philosophy really has to you know, expand. There's, there's so, many more, more, so many more possibilities, so many more explanations for things. Now, I'm not saying that any of this is true, but theor theoretical physicists are working on this to explain the forces of gravity. They're saying that the force of gravity leaks into the fourth dimension. There's one physicist who created this theory called string theory, which says that 
the basic components. If you break up atoms, you get quarks. If you break up quarks, we don't know yet. But if you keep breaking up these things, that the basic components of our world are these little strings that are 10-dimensional or 11-dimensional. So these ideas are being used to explain things in our world right now. We haven't proven them yet, though. But they're very fundamental to theory, and it's important to understand this, because then not only can you think outside of the box, but you can think outside of the dimension and the universe that the box is contained in altogether. So there's a lot more out there. If you're interested in this stuff, go on Google, look up multiple dimensions of space, look it up on Wikipedia, look up fourth dimension, and just you know use your head. Go do your research if you're really interested. Thanks. <laughs>